Today on Echo Voices, we have Jason Smith from PRC Saltillo. He's going to be talking about Men Speak in Touch chat and feature matching. At the bottom of the slide is a bit.ly link for the handouts today, and I will also put that in the chat for you. Welcome, Jason. How hey. are you doing today? Oh, I am doing well until I saw that picture. So let's turn over to sharing the screen to me. I've never <laughs> any pictures, so I don't want to hear my Absolutely. own recording. So, <laughs> so let's share that link with me. Okay, I will share screen now and let's go with that screen. Um, all right. Well, I'm already, um, you know, seeing that title actually makes me think, gosh, maybe I had the wrong idea of what I was actually supposed to focus on. But if so, it's awesome because I much cool. prefer your title than than what I originally We'll had. ask you questions. <laughs> yes, ask me questions. So what I am going to do is Wait a minute, did I share or not? Yes, I am sharing, look at that. Okay, so I just threw up a little agenda in, in there just so you had something to take notes on. Uh, if you've seen me before, you know that I'm, I'm not much of a PowerPointer. Um, I just, I guess, should introduce myself. I'm Jason Smith, I am a speech therapist uh, by background, although um, as impressive as that feeding seminar sounds, it's the one thing in our field that I refuse to do. So I, I, I've done pretty much everything, but I don't want to make babies choke. So I, I was always afraid of that. So kudos to all of you that take care of that. I really appreciate you. Um, so yes, today uh, we're definitely going to be talking about uh, men speak and touch chat. I did, uh, I, I do believe I was asked to do some product overview to help people be aware of just the devices we have available. But, you know, I am going to take a, a major shortcut on that and really uh, show you where you can go to learn more about that so that I can focus more on the vocabulary systems I love and uh, the, the, uh, the matrix, the feature matrix. So I'm going to do a pretty fast-paced device overview with about our products, access methods, and so on. Mixed in with that, and after, I'm going to do some online supports overview. This is where I'm kind of empowering the learners. This is where you can always go to find the most up-to-date information and training resources. And then we'll get into uh, the words power and men speak overview with that focus on the uh, feature matrix. So the, the places I have more text here is going to be hopefully shorter in, in the amount of time. And then we're going to sink into the vocabularies, which is what I truly love. So we're starting here at our prcsaltillo.com website. This is where, if you just need to know one website, this is the one to know for us. Basically, because up here with our waffle you can get to all the bazillion other websites that we have. Uh, notice in that list, I only, I think, listed four or five. We have quite a proliferation right now. So this is part of the uh, part of the kind of merger, or at least coming out as a merger, PRC Saltillo. Uh, we've been to in semi-independent companies for quite some time, though always connected behind the scenes. But in the last few years, we've we're really PRC Saltillo now. But because of that history, uh, we do have three product lines at the moment. And so I'm gonna go to products and go to our store here and get you oriented to those really quick. Uh, the Because PRC and Saltillo were each individual companies for such a, a long time, you know, over 50 years for PRC and now going into, into their third decade with Saltillo, uh, those each have product lines that continue on as such. The Accent product line from PRC and the Nova Chat product line from PRC Saltillo. Uh, these always look real, you know, it's, it's black rectangles on screens is what these look like. <laughs> um, but the Accent devices are the PRC side and they're They've always been the more heavy duty devices, they're heavier, and they have all the modern access methods. Um, on the accents, we've got actually three sizes, 
here, the Accent 1000, which is a 10 inch device plus two zeros for woohoo. The Accent 1400, that's a 14 inch device. And then the Accent 800, eight inch, the portable, lightest and most portable. Um, the, the top two here, the two largest ones can do any access methods. So that's eye tracking, head tracking, switches, joysticks, mice, anything you can plug in. The only one that I can't say they can do just yet is, is brain computer interface, though that is something we're actually working on now uh, in conjunction with the University of Michigan and I believe University of Pittsburgh. I don't hold me to that one. Uh, that's something where we actually hope to have some sort of commercially viable product within the next couple of years. I'm sure that is very exciting, Jason. Very it is exciting. exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, um, cutting it, edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's. I mean, it's it's interesting. It's been in development behind the scenes for quite some time. Um, I think it's you know it's going to be a gradual introduction. I think it's going to be def and. You know, I think we took a different approach than maybe Toby and their teams are doing. And so it'll be interesting to see, but it's, it is really exciting. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see who we can best serve that way. Uh, I don't have any pictures to show that. I, I'm really probably not even supposed to say that that's happening, <laughs> but I do anyway. I get excited too. All right. So the accents, heavy duty, they're also, uh, you know, Often they're mounted, you know, any of our devices can be mounted. There's, there's an important one for your matrix. But um, these are, you know, Accent 1400 is not meant, despite that deceptive handle up there, it's not really meant to be, you know, do to do walking around with it. Maybe your caregiver is using a strap to carry it around. Um, these are nowadays, especially, really mostly you go to these for the MinSpeak vocabularies, Unity, LAMP, core scanner. Um, and I'm going to gloss over a lot of details there. But again, you, I'm always going to be encouraging you to reach out to me if you need to go in depth on any of these more, because we've got multiple software systems right now. To get our full range of vocabulary systems, you're going to have a lot of uh, different options there you know, that I can add to the back, like a screen bar to show the message on them. No, we do not. Have, that's, that's something our friends at Toby have. We don't have that one, uh, Quinn. We don't have that, that back message thing. Uh, we are toying around. Uh, my understanding is we're toying around with maybe a, an accessory module that you can kind of snap on the top that will do that. But uh, no, we don't have that one. Um, okay, so the other, <laughs> I know, sorry. Um, the next product line, so that's PRC and Accent. The next product line I'll talk about uh, are the NovaChat product line. That's the Saltillo legacy products. Now, this is a little deceptive at the moment. Well, actually, good. It's not deceptive. It says, Right there, effective November 30th, the Nova Chat 5 will no longer be available. So our smallest little phone-based device um, is not going to be available. I really can't. I'm going to just tell some anyone, no, it's not available right now, even though that says a month. By the time all the funding stuff is done, it's just not going to work. Um, I will fill in some information on that when we get to the third product line. But Nova Chats are the Nova Chat 8, 5, not really, and Nova Chat 10. So again, they don't add the two zeros for woohoo. Those are just really referring to kind of the standard screen sizes. Even though technically the Nova Chat 10 now, the actual usable screen width is 11 inches. It's the same size device that we've been expecting with iPads and so on. And um, that is that just means the bezels are getting smaller and smaller. And so we're just getting more screen size. Um, so Nova Chats are all uh, Android based. They're actually, you know, we're buying, uh, in the case of the two bigger Nova Chats, the 8 and 10, we're purchasing Samsung tablets off the, you know, the consumer market. And then we have to build a case with speakers, kickstand, handle, jacks for um, connecting switches, all those accessory materials. We go through the extensive certification process to make these official speech generating devices, SGDs. So they're the Android version of, you know, the iPad in a case. 
Um, I should have mentioned under uh, the accents, the accents are actually custom built Windows tablets. So they're right now, the newest ones are running Windows 11, I believe. I say that with, I uh, don't know exactly when that switch happened from 10 to 11. But uh, we get to specify the glass thickness, for example. We specify the processor. We specify the anodized aluminum casing. So these are really designed from the ground up and built to our specifications. That's why they they are indeed heavier, but they're also heavy duty. They're really, you know, they're built for our, our users, you know, our most frequent users. Um, now, that's not to say that, you know, we, we definitely build up as much as we possibly can the um, the Nova chat devices and the VIA devices that I'll be showing next. But, um, you know, there's just no getting around. The, the main point of the consumer grade side of things is that those are light and can go anywhere. That's what people really like about them. Um, so they are a little bit more fragile. So the Nova chat um, devices all run the chat software. And um, I have to... I'll distinguish these in just a little bit, but just quickly saying it's unfortunately not unlike the touch chat app, which is what you get on, on an iPad or iPad based device. The chat app is not available for public download from the Google Play Store. Um, Android is just a bit too wild and wooly. You don't know what features and capabilities are available on uh, any given tablet out there because it's just anyone can make one. And so th these are really demanding pieces of software. They demand, you know, a lot of things work well and 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 be really hyper specified. So um, it just isn't really possible to say, okay, yep, this chat software will run on your Android tablet. So it's not published on the App Store and really um, on Android. Now, really, it's based on this. I think you you kind of warbled chart. a little bit there. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think it was my voice. So that's probably, is that my internet? Well, my internet is. Hmm, Could be my far. internet. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I'm seeing nodding and smiling. So I'm going to keep going on. Okay. Um, but yeah, just so just be aware that Sadly, I mean, I have I have a district that was really bold near me. Uh, it's actually my home district here in Vancouver. And uh, they, as a district, instead of going iPads for everyone, went Samsung tablets for everyone. But unfortunately, and, and, you know, they really wanted to have touch chat. But unfortunately, they didn't ask me that before they made that decision. And I, I think it's unfortunate that, you know, we can't do that for them. But that's the way it is right now. So Nova Chat devices, you know, again, are really designed. Are there differences in Nova Chat and Touch Chat on an iPad? Um, so the Nova Chat really is these devices that are Android tablets in a case. Uh, Touch Chat is terminology for the iPad or iOS side of things. In terms of the vocabularies inside, 99% of them are the same. Uh, there are, I think, a couple files, some of the international files that might not be available in the Android version versus touch chat. That's the only difference I can think of at the moment, Quinn. Thank you. Great question. So with that, I will. Oh, and so as far as, you know, again, these are really lightweight devices, you know, meant to be very portable and they can do switches, but really most of the time they're they're meant for touch users. But some people do like them for switch access, one and two switch access. And um, you can even, you know, plug, there's ways to plug in mice and do other alternatives. Uh, right now, though, no head tracking, no eye tracking. I, I'll stop mentioning brain computer interface. I, don't, I really don't know anything about it at this point, but... I would presume probably not for a while. I'm sure you sure that's just accents for us for a bit. <laughs> okay. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the third product line. So we had PRC, we had Saltillo, and now our third product line is PRC Saltillo. And uh, those are our Apple or iOS-based devices. These are the tablet iOS basically iPads in a case is what we're talking about now. Instead of Samsung tablets in a case, they're iPads in a case. 
At this very second, we have two, the Via Pro, which is actually an 11 inch, but kind of that 10 to 11 inch size of device, iPad Pro in a case, and the Via Mini. Uh, that's an iPad Mini in, in the certified case and all that. Both of these can actually run three different apps. Uh, we have the Touch Chat app. Can we found? Thank you, Shonda. Uh, we have the Touch Chat app, which um, we're going to dive into a little bit more, just kind of by default, by talking about word power. We had the Lamp Words for Life app, which I'll mention a little bit more in depth when we talk about MinSpeak. And then our third app, tick, hiding back here, or it's actually in front on this one, uh, that's Dialogue with Essence. Uh, I'll just quickly talk about that one here. It's not one I'm going to spend as much time on. That is an app that is focused really on literate users who just want keyboard with word prediction and some phrase buttons. It's really targeted toward the ALS market, uh, VA, you know, adult acquired disorders typically, I'll, although I'll say young adult as well. We do definitely have, you know, uh, you know, cases where something has happened and yet uh, it, affecting speech, but we at least have the ability to do uh, text is preserved or literacy is preserved. So that is mostly what that is used for. And I will quickly throw in because I know this is on the matrix. Um, our voice banking software uh, works very well and is really designed to work with that app. Um, our voice banking, we have our own voice banking site at PRC Saltillo. But it's also compatible with Toby's voice banking site. We, we all decided to play nice there. We've been, you know, frenemies for a long time, uh, us and Toby. So um, I didn't really mention, you know, like the eye tracker that goes on the Accent 1400 and 1000. The guts of that eye tracker, the actual cameras and such, that's built by Toby. Um, so we license that from them. We build our software and our case around it and such. So We've all played nice for a long time. Most most of us have played nice. And, and Toby, I will, in Smartbox, I'll count among those. So, um, all right, sorry, back to the uh, iPad-based device, Vias. So I said we had those three apps. And um, as far as access methods, there's some variability amongst the apps, unfortunately, although hopefully that variability is gonna go away and it's all gonna be consistent. Uh, Everybody, of course, does touch. These all have the ability to plug in switches, connect Bluetooth switches, and so on. There's probably some tricky ways you can do. I mean, you can actually, uh, you know, take an accent and control another device like an iPad. So technically, you could use your accent and run a mouse on an iPad, you know, on a, on a Via Mini. So there's multiple ways to get other access methods on there. And but uh, eye tracking, it, I, I actually kind of put that in parentheses on the matrix because technically on our actual PRC Saltillo fundable by insurance products, we don't have eye tracking for the VIA devices. However, this one's just a note to take down for you. We do have uh, something kind of new for us. We do have a consumer grade product line we've just been launching over the past year called Versa, V-E-R-S-A. I'll just go ahead and chat that in here. We've got the Versa Wrap and Versa I is coming soon. Um, these are not insurance fundable devices. That's why that's not really up here on, on our store, these are actual uh, Versa wrap. I sure I, I forgot one more thing, the Versa speaker. And you may have to mess around with whether you put a space in between each of those. I'm probably off on the, the lingo there. But um, the Versa wrap is just, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of replacing, if any of you had ever heard of our chat wrap, which was kind of associated with Saltillo, which is an iPad case that you can buy. And that's what the Versa wrap is, is an iPad case. The Versa speaker, you can buy separately and, oh, awesome, Carolyn. Great to hear. Um, and yes, okay, so it, it's it's taking its time to, to get out here, but it's coming. Uh, great, Shannon. Uh, yeah, so if you've seen that, the it comes with, one of the nice things about it, it's actually got a little slot to pop in your, um, oh gosh, what's that called? It's the iOS kind of track my my piece of equipment that you can, Shandra's gonna type. The Apple here. tag. 
Apple tag. Thank you. Yeah, it you does. Can it has a little tag inside little the case. There. Yeah. Um, and uh, then also that Versa speaker can be snapped into the back. So that's a Bluetooth speaker that can either be snapped in there or it's got a lanyard. You can wear it around your neck. So your voice sounds like it's coming from you. And um, and then in process right now, it was supposed to be, I was honestly, we were told July. I made a lot of lovely promises to people that have not come to fruition. This is the fun part of the job. Um, uh, we're, the Versa I is coming out. And that is basically the chat wrap case with the Hero eye tracker built into it. Uh, and we just, unfortunately, you know, technology, hey, guess what? Uh, it's not just Zoom that glitches out or MS Teams. Uh, sometimes it's complicated communications just through a, a case between that eye tracker and the iPad. There's just some things they've been wrinkling out, or ironing out uh, over the past couple months. So that's coming soon. So that's kind of the exception to what I'm saying here about the Via Mini and Via Pro. They don't have eye tracking, not as a fundable device unit. So that... But technically, you would be able to plug in third-party trackers if you if you were so brave. Um, the next uh, access method, head tracking, that is available on two of the three apps, Touch Chat and Essence with Dialog. It's coming soon, I, I think, to LAMP. Um, we've been a little reticent on LAMP because LAMP is always 84 buttons. And so that's just a little small, especially on the Via Mini for I, head tracking to work well on uh, on especially the smaller via mini. So we just kind of hold off on that for now, but I think it's coming soon and that technology is always improving. Thank you, I respond, Chandra. I can never remember uh, that company's name. So um, <clears throat> that was my supposed to be quick overview of our three product lines. Um, as you, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Nope. One more thing. I said, uh, this Nova chat five, it's pretty much gone. By the way, that was a Motorola phone. One of the reasons it has to go is that that Motorola phone is actually pretty old and, you know, we just can't get replacement parts for it. And we always do certify that we're going to cover our devices and service them for five years. So at some point we just have to make decisions where, you know, we have to say end of product line because we got to be able to have parts on, on hand to, to repair the devices that are out there. What it's going to repl be replaced by, and I did see a prototype already this summer, it's actually moving over to the VIA product line. So there's going to, I believe it's going to be called, it's not the VIA really mini, it's something like the VIA track, I believe. It's so where we basically, we've got a, it's an iPhone uh, in the case is what's kind of, is replacing the Nova Chat 5. So, I'm I'm sad that we're going to have a gap there. I mean, the Nova Chat Five is is probably one of the least requested, but it is requested uh, fairly regularly in my territory. But you know, compared to the other device sizes, it's definitely the lowest seller. But um, you know, I'm looking forward to that being something that, and, and I even got to see Lamp on it, which is um, something we the the makers of Lamp was, have always been shy about. Actually, so that Touch Chat app. Essence Dialog app, Lamp Words for Life, anyone can go and get those from the app store on their own devices. Unlike the, what I said about Android, right? Anybody with an iPad or an iPhone can get Touch Chat or Dialog. If you have an iPhone, you at this moment cannot get Lamp on it. All right, not allowed. We're, we're again, it's a really, you know, Lamp is always 84 buttons. Those are super small buttons and I don't know. We're all old and don't think uh, the youngsters can can actually run that. It's just the buttons are too small. We don't believe it can be done. I think, again, I think we might end up relaxing that. I did get to see Lamp on uh, an iPhone-sized device. So, oh, welcome, Deborah. I saw you just appeared there. And Chandra, my understanding at the moment, uh, you know, I'm... I'm not privy to all the detailed product information and all those, you know, development timelines, but my understanding is no, there's not going to be a five inch Android based device. We're just going to be really the eight and the 10. Okay. That is both a wild and wooly run through our currently seven devices divided by three through three product lines. 
and um, and access methods. So, oh, and actually, I even mentioned Versa. So, you know, that's a lot of information. It's not a lot of details. So again, I'll, I'll always be encouraging you to reach out to me for anything more detailed, and I can definitely point you to that. But any questions before I kind of, well, I didn't even talk about language systems. I'm just going to save that for the, the language system section. Any uh, final questions about the product lines, yearn and burnings that you'd like to know before I move on to the online supports? Giving me a chance to sit. Yeah, all of this information is very interesting, and there's such overlap between the devices and the software, and, and right. it's, it's hard to say, well, what do you put on this matrix? That Yeah, well, I, if you did look, I, I, I said, oh my gosh, I mean, if I if I combine all of our stuff into one, I can just paste X all the way down and that doesn't really help you. Uh, <laughs> no, so I did I did split it up into those three groups. Um, I will uh, caution everyone. I was, I think I was telling Chandra this before, you know, I'm, I wasn't a hundred percent sure I understood all of the terminology on that, that sheet. So there may be some features that we do have that I just didn't quite understand how it's worded. We might have a different name for it. So I'll definitely be, I'm, I'm going to consider that a live document if you don't mind. And I'll Absolutely. be updating that as I, as I go along and think about things. Yeah. And if there's things um, to our audience, if, if you guys look through the matrix and you see blanks in there, ask him this. Is really? Definitely... Jason, you don't have this? Well, I mean, someone already <laughs> asked about the, the rear facing uh, text screen, uh, a partner communication yeah. screen. Yeah, we don't have, we, I know we and don't I'll, have that one. That one yeah, I, and I'll just, yeah. I'll just call it out that Kelly Fawner is here uh, listening in, um, in case we have some pressing questions that we need. Excellent. All right. And I see, oh, some other names that have appeared now that I, I recognize and some I don't. Welcome, everyone. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead then and bop on to our online supports overview. Uh, this is probably the less, oh, I know that this was brought up in the feature matching uh, section. Uh, it certainly is a big part of what I do and what I think uh, is a big part of the PRC Saltillo mission. Um, we know you just can't say, yay, you've got a device, see ya. Uh, this really is, I mean, especially with all of this information that, you know, all of that whole matrix, you know, all of that information about AAC devices and just really how to implement them properly, we feel is a big part of our mission at PRC Saltillo. And so we do have a lot of support. And so I did want to go over really just a sampling of those. Uh, you've seen me already in my in in our PRC Saltillo site. That's where you can certainly find out about the products. But a really nice thing up here as well is our support uh, page. One thing, uh, some of these things have just come online in the past year that have just been a real, uh, you know, godsend. I would say um, we've always been able to check repair status, but here's just a really quick place to do it. You can get your device unlocked and. and um, uh, you know, all funded devices, as you may or may not know, have to be dedicated in the communication system uh, when they first ship out from our home office. But we know that what the funding world dis defines as communication is actually very limited. Uh, they kind of see these as technically speech only prosthetics is really what they think of them as. Whereas we know communication, especially nowadays, you know, don't tell me an email that an email is not communication. That's what I want to tell the insurance people. Uh, you know, don't communicate to me via your website that websites aren't a communication format that our users need to access, right? So anyway, so you can unlock the, the devices with a nominal fee. We've got it down to $15. When I started, it was 50. So I'm really glad to see that just keeps going down. We do have to charge something though. It's a requirement. Um, Another really cool thing though, is uh, we have this request support device repair or transfer of ownership. If you have a handle break, uh, one thing, gosh, I keep thinking of things I forgot to mention. All those devices that I showed you back on that homepage, that first section, all of them now, as of January 1st of this year, come with a five-year warranty. 
And that's a really huge deal if you've been in this field for a while, because once things are out of warranty, we always get to reassure, yes, insurance will pay for that. Unfortunately, uh, getting your insurance to repair a device is pretty much now exactly like getting your insurance to buy a device. It can be ridiculously laborious and take a lot of time. So we have now basically pushed our warranty out to five years to really try to just see that during the expected lifetime of a product, which for most funding sources is five years, that's kind of how often you can re re-upgrade and such, uh, that, you know, we're just covering that under warranty now. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's the, the dream is that we're just not having to have users go without their devices for three to six months because of waiting, you know, trying to grind through the um, funding process. Now, most of the time, either I personally or from our home office, we're going to be able to send you out a, a repair loaner during that process, uh, during any of those. But it's just hopefully one big hassle that is is removed. Um, but here on this site, uh, this is where I get the frank, uh, thankfully send people on top a lot of times. If you have a broken handle, a broken kickstand or case or a new charger that you need, you can just come in here, quick, fill out this very short form of who you are, what device you have, and what's the problem and where to send it. And it's going out that day or the next. You know, it's really that pr prompt. And so um, this is also the where you can start a repair request um, instead of, you know, calling service and being on hold. You know, we do have great service, but um, it our service department is over there on Ohio time. And sometimes that can be a little rough for us. Uh, you know, after that school day, oh, I'd just like to get on the phone and call service. They're often closed. So this is a great way to get a repair request started. Uh, but I always tell people, hey, especially now with the new warranty, you know, you're going to be able to get those replacement parts, I hope, pretty quickly. Uh, that includes key guards as well. I didn't mention that one. Screens and such, that's going to be a full repair, but um, definitely a good place to go. Okay, I need to get back on these other sites. Or I'm not going to get to talk about language systems. So uh, the next site I wanted to bring up is aaclanguagelab.com. This is the more like the clinical implementation supports site. Um, it really focuses mostly on our men speak language systems. That's LAMP and Unity. Uh, there are lessons, and lesson plans, and activities here, uh, giving you, you know, vocabulary target suggestions, giving you actual activities to to elicit those words and such. Um, under getting started, there's a language screener. There's educational materials that can be really useful to SLPs to introduce to parents that are just really meant for their level of consumption, talking about language stages. We have really in-depth curricula here. Um, if you're a news to use user or unique learning, uh, we've got those. But under the getting ready to read section, we have uh, uh, curricula that have been worked out with, uh, developed with, oh gosh, Karen Erickson, sorry. Uh, at North Carolina, I believe, or is it Duke? I'm going to get that wrong. Well, it's in that state. Um, but basically, getting ready to read has individualized literacy curricula for many of our vocabulary systems, like Unity 84, Word Power, Lamp Words for Life, and it's just a really thorough. There's there's materials you can print and download, lesson plans, really all the way through, from uh, beginner to to you know good first stage literacy. Uh, so uh, also on this AAC language lab, you have uh, manual boards. I put a couple links, actually uh, Chandra uploaded a couple manual boards that you might want to grab if you haven't for the last section of this talk. Um, word lists, vocabulary resources, language charts, tons of materials in here. Um, you can uh, subscribe, but a lot of there's a plenty here that's free. The subscription twenty dollars. Um, if you're a district level person, it is you. Thank you, Deborah. I, I got it right the first time. I got lucky. Um, the subscription can be worth it for some additional tools and just more more products, more uh, lesson plans, activities, and and curricula. Okay. 
Um, but yes, I'm sorry, it's a $20 subscription, but if you are as a district maybe looking at a district-wide support, please reach out to me first and I may have some other options for you. Okay, oh, there's that core board and that core board, we'll get back there. All right, AAC Learning Journey, just bringing this one to your attention. This is really where we have our webinar and live and recorded webinar style of training materials um, on almost anything and everything. Uh, this is our join in web apps on the Accent device, which I didn't even get to talk about, but those are ac web access on our, our Accent devices. Um, you'll see a lot of information here for LAMP trainings. This is where if you're looking for a LAMP workshop to, um, to attend online, or if you want to get one in your area, well, reach out to me. Here's where you can get the online one. Does Language Lab have anything for touch chat or only for LAMP? Uh, Quinn, yes. Language Lab, whenever you see word power, that's focusing on touch chat and chat versions of word power. Uh, great question there. I can't see my tabs, but yes. So if I go into, for example, a lesson plan here, and I'm going to pick same and different. Let's hope, oh, because of course, I let me go and pick a free sample one. There I go. If I teach my dog eight words, for example, um, when you go in to create a smart chart, you can pick whether you're using Saltillo Word Power. Um, with symbol sticks or PCS, we have both systems available, although symbol sticks is default. Um, or word power with PRC symbols, we have some old files like that, lamp words for life. So yeah, I can pick this one. I can say word power 60 basic. And um, here's the smart charts for this particular lesson plan, focusing on what words are these? Oh yeah. Words like close and find. So this is a smart chart that you can print up for. Here's how you say these words on the device. Um, thank you, Deborah. Good to see you. So uh, yeah, so uh, definitely all word power for Nova Chat or Touch Chat, uh, Quinn, is going to be supported here on the AAC Language Lab. Great question. Thank you. Uh, learning journey, just tons of stuff. Again, I'm probably going to even say there's so much here right now and it's such so in flux. You might even reach out to me and say, hey, Jason, I want to learn about X. What's the best course for that? Okay. Yeah, be brave. Go and search. But sometimes there's just a lot right now and uh, you might you might want some assistance. So that's where you go for webinar style trainings um, and, and, and video materials. But um, I would also point out, point you to our two uh, YouTube channels. This is where you find more like brief little tutorial videos, also some implementation videos. For example, um, you know, we've got little tips for your AAC system. I, we walk through our literacy planner. Oh, come on. Where's the one I'm thinking of here? They're in here, but I'm not going to be able to find them this quickly. Um, but this is, uh, you know, th these are a lot shorter videos, mostly about features and functions that are available in the PRC side on the Accent devices and on the Saltillo side, more on the Nova chats and just in general, the touch chat software as well. So you'll see a lot there. Um, as I said, I, I could point you to so many more websites. I, I think another important one, though, that I am going to go ahead and mention. Um, oh, let me get back to Oh, go away. <laughs> I can't get uh, the, I don't know how to get that thing to move out of my way. Thank you. There we go. Back here on the waffle, quickly mention, if you're working, if your district or your 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 user really just has the iPad, you know, a, a bare iPad of their own with an app, I'm going to highly recommend the Touch Chat app site. And the LAMP, I'm sorry, where's the LAMP Words for Life app site? Oh, that that's the one, those two right next to each other. Um, those are websites devoted specifically to the apps. And that's where we send people for web-based support. There's tons of, of tutorial level material there as well. And dialogue actually, although I think that's probably the least confusing one, in the least, but we do have a website for that as well. Okay, questions. All right, I'm gonna do one last website and then I'm gonna, we're gonna get into um, 
the, the language system. So the last website I want to point you to is aacfunding.com. This one isn't quite the matrix. I think one thing you might throw into that matrix is support during the funding process, because boy, is that something you need. Um, it, you know, every state is different. Uh, most every funding agency can, is a little bit different. Um, I'm always, you know, just here in Oregon, every county has their own particular implementation of Oregon Health Plan and how they interpret those rules and, you know, re requirements uh, varies from state, uh, from county to county. So I'm always having to get help from our funding team that I'm, I'm actually much more tightly linked to nowadays, which is great. But we built a whole new website devoted to funding um, where you can actually create an account and uh, create applications. I have a privacy mode here, so you don't see a bunch of names. Um, that was probably terrible. Someone can freeze the screen or something and do something really mean. But um, basically, you you will only get access to the to the applications that you're invited to as a contributor, whether you're a parent, SLP, um, you know, other sort of provider. There are, you know. Basically, everyone can that's working on that packet can all see what what is happening with that that particular application, what stage it is in in the funding process. So this is where all of our you know insurance funded applications go now is through there. Um, again, uh, big big site. You're going to probably want an introduction to it uh, or a walkthrough on on funding if that's new for you. But um, if you've been doing this a while, you you know definitely dive in. Oh, hi Deb, good to see you too, um, and uh, see what that has to offer. Also, this is the place to go to borrow a device from us. Uh, of course, trials are very important. Uh, yes, very good. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, to borrow a device, we've got really two main programs. The trial device program, which is direct to uh, the user, it's meant to go home with them. The family can just sign up for this. Oftentimes, it's the family and SLP sitting down together and starting this application. We do need them to be working with uh, a speech therapist. We want to know you're, you know, this is this is serious. You're on the path. You're working with someone that's going to help you do the trial again. We know we that support is needed. Uh, we also have uh, an evaluator loan program where that is meant to more go to the school, the clinic, and, and that SLP working with multiple clients uh, who wants a device on hand for four weeks. Um, of course, you can always reach out to me for you know one-off uh, times where you need devices, but this is where I'm directing people most of the time when you want that, that full four-week evaluation and you need that equipment because I don't have it all on hand. Um, there's and there's a lot of options as we saw before. So um, again, you can just go create an account, log in, and set set up an evaluator loan. And and those are actually tend to tend to be shipping out in about two weeks, pretty consistently. So we're really on top of that one. Okay. All right, we're down to 25 minutes for two language systems. That's going to be interesting. Uh, any questions about those online supports? I, I really should say that your, your one other online support is me. Uh, uh, email me for any questions about where to go to, you know, especially that, that waffle of websites. And even within each website, there's just so much nowadays that you can definitely reach out to me and uh, get guidance on that, or even a tour of any of those particular sites or groups of sites. I'm happy to do that. Um, but definitely feel free to reach out to me. So any questions about those sites before I move on? I did want to point out, folks, uh, that Kelly Fonder mentioned that, yes, we do have in the language lab symbol sticks and PCS symbol support, PCS board maker. That's another way, friendly way we work with our friendly competitor at Toby who owns board maker symbols. Um, symbol sticks are the default on Nova Chat and Touch Chat, but you can, uh, when you order them through the funding service or as an after, after delivery uh, payment or upgrade, you can purchase PCS symbols. Okay, here we go. Take a deep breath. Let's do uh, vocabulary systems really quick. Uh, and yeah, I mean really quick because we're we're down to uh, a few minutes here. So, touch chat in particular, 
What I'm showing here, this is the chat editor software, by the way. This is uh, something anyone can download, but it only works on Windows computers. And it emulates basically the touch chat and chat software. It runs those vocabularies that are on there. And there are a lot of vocabularies inside touch chat. Just, I'm gonna just say touch chat for a while and uh, just understand that it applies to Nova chat as well. Notice here when I go into this library really quickly, uh, we see what Kel Kelly, Kelly, Kelly was mentioning there, symbol sticks or PCS board maker options. I'm gonna stick with symbol sticks for now. Uh, these are all the different files. Well, let me here, let me open up the word power one. These are all the different vocabulary files that are available within touch chat and word power. It's a lot. Um, I'm just gonna gloss over the, the vast majority of these and focus on the most popular ones. Um, Multi-chat 15, which we have three different versions of here. And so those are 15 button systems. In a way, they're almost proto word power. They're kind of just more phrase based and, and, and limited in, in terms of scope, but um, they're, they're 15 button systems. Uh, my quick chat, things like that. These are systems that are definitely more phrase based. I, I shouldn't say more necessarily more uh, amenable to maybe a gestalt approach where it's just kind of recording things on buttons, um, putting phrases on buttons. It, it might actually, they might actually work better in that way. The other systems that I'm talking about, while you can do whatever you want to a button, you can put anything you want on a, on a button, including phrases, including recordings, but um, they're really designed to be spontaneous novel utterance generation type of systems where you're you're combining single words into into sentences and utterances. Um, these other systems here might be a little bit more phrase based in some cases, although spelling that's just a, a keyboard um, with uh, word prediction. But the what people know and go to touch chat and Nova chat devices for the most is our implementations are our implementations of word power. Uh, word power is a vocabulary system that is not owned by us. It's actually owned by Nancy Inman of Inman Innovations. She actually used to work in my role with PRC Saltillo way back in the day when we were, I think just PRC, she was on the PRC side, not hundred percent on that. But anyway, um, she likes, she makes word power for a whole bunch of companies. I know she makes them for Toby and Smartbox at least, or for Grid. And, um, but, you know, I'll just unabashedly say we have the most and we have the best. So there, I'll, I'll say that. Um, but you can see there's a lot of different versions here. The main things to key in on are the buttons. The number is the but how many buttons are on that screen? 20, 25, 42, and so on. And then really the, the main thing, the, the basic distinction is one I want you to key in on now. Yes, we do have something for touch and scan and simply, I couldn't even tell you what exactly that means. It's just, it's just a more basic system. I think should, it's just older terminology for basic. But what I'm going to stick with today is Word Power 60 Basic, because that is, at least in this area, by far the most popular you know, pre to elementary to even high school uh, word power system that people get on touch chat and chat software. So this is a 60 button system. And if, you, if you're new to word power, the, the shortest way I can get it across to you, it's, it's a word prediction system on steroids. The whole screen is word prediction. Um, now this is word power 60 basic. That basic really means the word prediction, the vocabulary is really tuned towards early younger communicators. Uh, it's not just a word prediction system. It's not the same word prediction that's gonna come up on your standard adult word prediction keyboard on an iPhone. It's, it's driven towards younger, uh, earlier communicator utterances. So for example, you know, I hit I. What, after we say a pronoun like I, we tend to say a verb. Uh, and so the whole whole screen changes to green for verbs. And uh, we got some minty helping verbs over here. But here I hit eat, I eat, and then boom, up come my, well, I guess these are supposed to be kid foods. I don't know what we're doing to our kids, but um, these are my foods too, right? Uh, my my go-tos. Uh, specific fringe vocabulary 
words related to that noun. So I can say, I eat goldfish crackers, one button for each word. And that's really the approach that word power takes. It's trying to, you know, it, when we all have our communication systems try to address the issue of how do we get users fast and fluent on a commu communication system? Word power's answer is let's have you hit as few buttons as possible, particularly for, in this case for those early developing basic three and four word utterances. So I can say drink, and then my my in that same kind of general fringe vocabulary area, the most common you know kid words come up. This is where you can do all the customization. Um, you know nobody polices these. Uh, so you can always edit wherever you want to edit, right? But if you're going to stay with the spirit of the system, really e either word power or the unity and lamp systems that I'm talking about today, please, please, please leave the front screen alone unless you really know what you're doing. <laughs> um, this dynamic word prediction system that is built off this, really, it, it starts from the home screen. There are places where we give you to, to really encourage you. Yes, yes, customize, you know. When you're seeing these white background buttons, you know, about food, make sure your kiddos preferred food items popping up right here, right away, instead of having to maybe go to this second page, which we do give you for even more of those highly preferred items. Uh, same with like the beverages here when I say drink. Oh, that one doesn't have a more button. I'd put a more button there if I needed to. But again, customize these blank buttons to your heart's content. But these other ones, like this drank button here, is kind of a little bit of motor planning in word power, not as much as in lamp and such, but these drank and ing, they're kind of always there in that position. And it's best if we don't mess with that so that you can, um, oh wait, pizza wasn't there? It's right there, eat pizza. I'm sorry, Shannon. Come on, we got you, we got you covered. Uh, so um, yeah, so there's tons of customization space in here. I mean, really functionally infinite. Um, just we encourage, you know, do, the, do it in the places that works best with the system. Here on this very popular social page, um, you know, this is very customizable. There's no reason not to customize a lot of this and, and do what you'd like with it. Obviously here, personal information and questions. My name, I live at. We want you to customize those and even add more in. I like to point out this page. It's a really popular one because you've got the personal statement information. My name is, I live at, I go to school at, but over here in blue kind of reflected in the same positions are the question forms of those. So you can actually kind of teach the, the question asking instead of always just the question answering. But that's really how this most popular system works. It's really a, a predictive system. It's kind of driving some early phrases, and but it's it's very robust. There's tons of vocabulary in here. Um, now, I'm not going to have time today to dive into all the clinical impl implications of that, but just know that there are, and I can, I can definitely do trainings with you where I, I dive into some of those concerns uh, more in depth. But a lot of people just really love this one because it, it does help get those early multi-word utterances going. And, you know, you know, for a parent to have their child be able to hit two buttons, say, you know, eat crackers and, and make a basic request. That's always been, you know, kind of torture or, you know, a, a game of perpetual 20 questions. That's really powerful and motivating. And so this system really tends to sell itself when you show it because it's pretty intuitive for, for the caregivers. It's pretty intuitive for the adults. What I caution you as, as therapists and, and people helping evaluate these systems is what's intuitive for an adult really is the literacy piece here. Notice all these buttons have text, in some cases, only text on them. In fact, one of those matrix items is you can, can you turn off the symbols? Yes, you can actually turn off all the symbols on all these. Um, this kind of is a text-based system. And to really get the full power out of word power at this level or higher, you know, it really is anticipating you're gonna be using literacy to some degree. Um, you know, when I get into the actions here, you know, if the if I, I'm having to scan, find my actions, 
I don't know if I'm going to remember all these different faces and red blocks. Um, I'm probably relying on literacy skills to, to start scanning this. And then if it's not there, I might even have to go to actions A to Z. If I'm going that deep, maybe I just need to start spelling and using word prediction, which is built in here. So um, that's, you know, it's like all the bases are covered. There's a lot of ways to deal with this. Oftentimes users graduate from this particular system to word power 80. Let me go there. Uh, actually, Carolyn, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, so let me hit that in a second. Um, uh, this is word power 80 where you just have the keyboard and a lot of one hit dynamic vocabulary wrapped around it. This is this is the second most popular, uh, at least in my area, uh, word power system. Uh, some adults prefer this type of system when they've been postlingually impaired. If they're literate and that's preserved, they, you know, some of them will, yeah, they'll appreciate the single hit button that, you know, I don't want that, where I can say that without having to type, but boom, when I need to specify actual French vocabulary, I just start spelling it here and word prediction takes over. So this is a very powerful system and a lot of word power 60 users, if they do develop those literacy skills, they move up to this system uh, quite frequently in my experience so far. Uh, Carolyn had a great question. Uh, is it easy to change icons? It really is except on this particular uh, emulator. I don't think I have an easy way to do it on the emulator, but on um, the devices, both on the touch chat app uh, and, and the devices based on that, the vias, and on the Nova chats, there's a really uh, simple way to either go in and specify, oh, I want this skin tone for all pictures, or uh, there's a randomize button. Uh, and that will go through and randomize the entire collection of these uh, faces and bodies that you see throughout. So yeah, that was something that came out a couple years ago. That was pretty cool. Is there a how-to as a how to do that? Um, yes, that is probably going to be easiest found on that touch. Can I type today? Touchchatapp.com site. Um, it's, uh, we don't tend to have the, the cheat sheets as much here, but, um, in the learning center under support articles, well, I'm just going to go to support home. If I go there, oops, I just want regular support. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's not that far to find it. Um, menu vocabulary settings. Thank you, Shaney. I'm just trying to, you know help uh, teach the teachers here on where you can go to find these types of, of things. But um, uh, skin, think of my time in skin. Nope, that would have been nice though. Um, yeah, well, um, yeah, no, okay. Hmm, diversity, I don't know what that's gonna be under. Well, that was a fail. Uh, <laughs> um, it is a, a setting that you can go and change, but um, I'm not finding it as quickly as I like, but in um, certainly reach out to me and I can send you those steps. I'm your how-to a lot of times. So um, I would actually just have to pop it up and, and see what the exact terminology is, but it's only like two or three steps. It's, it's pretty quick. Okay. But um, if there's one, uh, I, I included this as a very short note on here. One way, the, uh, the best way to think about word power, predictive. I said word power is, is word prediction on steroids. Um, it's trying to be get you fast and fluent by kind of guessing what the, what the next word should be and presenting you a page full of options on that. It also does, I'm just one that I can't help but show cool things. Um, I think this is also kind of cool. Let me go back to Word Power 60 Basic one last time. So not only like say I eat goldfish crackers, there's also a little bit of memory built in, which can help with working with our kiddos early on to maybe stay on topic for one or two utterances. Uh, 
So, you know, we're always trying to teach a variety of pragmatic functions, you know, communication functions to our kiddos. So instead of just always stating things like I eat goldfish crackers or I like that, we can start even from here. I don't even have to reset and go home. I can start saying, do you like, and it remembers that we were talking about food. Okay. We were talking about those. Do you like goldfish crackers? So there's with any word prediction system, there's pros and cons to that, that, you know, you need to be aware of mainly the, 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 that's beautiful and very helpful. Uh, the main concern about word prediction is, is that going to drive our users into things where they don't know how to break themselves out of it? Are they going to limit themselves to what's predicted? That's the, that's my, my main clinical caveat to just kind of throw out there to the wind as I trans transition over to uh, the men speak systems. Any last, boy, and, and when it comes to that matrix, I really should say touch chat and um, uh, the chat software, they definitely have more of the bells and whistles, a uh, lot more of those little little features and functions. Actually, there was one I realized wasn't on your list, Chandra, uh, a whiteboard. Uh, there's actually a way to, I don't have one set up. I should have done it. Like here's visual scenes. That's on the list. Um, stories and scripts. Ways to work with Alexa and Hey Siri. Is there a vocabulary that has an icon prediction bar? Does it always change the whole screen? I, I it's always the whole screen for word power. Uh, yeah, Sarah. That if I understand that correct correction or that question correctly. Um, but anyway, you can uh, just what I was saying before. You can make basically a button the size of a whole screen and turn it into a whiteboard and link to that. And you can scribble, you can write your messages. That's a really powerful feature. I don't think whiteboard was in your, uh, maybe that goes under other Chandra for- Yeah, I, I, I had never uh, heard of that one. So I'll yeah, yeah, add that's, that as a note on yours, yeah. Yeah, that's that's often, mo most often used for adults who do have some pre preserved writing and, and, and such. But um, it can also just be fun for kids to be able to it, you can use it as a basic little art system as well, built into the, without having to go out and launch another app, um, which these buttons can do. They can launch apps. Oh my gosh, I'm going to talk about MinSpeak in seven minutes. This is not going to work. So uh, just, uh, I mean, very, very- have faith in you. What's that? <laughs> oh, you have faith in me. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, please remember to reach out for me. I'm, I can talk about uh, LAMP and, and Unity for three to five hours. Um, oh, by Noel was here too. Great to see you, Noel. You know about LAMP and you, you can handle it. So um, going back to that question I asked her, how do we get users to be fast and fluent on these systems? I said, word power says, I'm going to try to predict what your sentences are and get you to them with as minimal button hits as possible. Min speak, which is an overarching approach that is uh, includes LAMP and Unity. Um, that men speaks answer to that question is we're going to have you act like a keyboard. We're going to have this act like a keyboard that your body gets to build a map of. You might have heard this under the topic of motor planning. That's what LAMP stands for. It's language acquisition through motor planning. Trying to remind people that, yes, speech is a motor act, really complex intersystem motor act that often, you know, well, for our users, that's why they are getting a communication device. That complex intersystem speech system is not working well. We're replacing it still though with a motor system. Brain computer interface might be blurring that a little bit, but everything else so far, whether it's your eyes, your fingers, your head, your joystick, your switches, you're using a motor system to interact with this device and LAMP you know, is a theoretical approach that is saying, reminding you, hey, this is a motor system. Let's think about motor learning principles and motor learning design principles. And so the way this works, really both LAMP and Unity, they're picture spelling systems, um, which sounds really weird until I remind people that, you know, this is a picture spelling system. We just don't ever think of it that way. These pictures are so burned into our brain. They have a special category in our brain as letters. And we put these pictures in order left to right. And because they loosely represent sounds, outcome words in our well-trained brains, even dealing with the mess that English orthography is. 
Okay. Here, we're actually doing the same thing. We're spelling with these pictures, but instead of spelling with sounds, we're spelling with word associations and grammar roles for the most part, even sometimes pragmatic roles. Um, so that allows this to act like a keyboard where our bodies get to build a mental map of this. I say, you know, in in our you know Western literate brains up there on our uh, on our oh gosh what's the name of the uh, I'm, I'm having my last minute brain fade here um, the 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 little homunculus built into our motor strip of our brain right everyone remembers seeing that homunculus bye bye Quinn thanks for your questions today um, that homunculus has that big huge finger up there right because we do so many things motor and sensory with our fingers well at the end of it. For an American in particular, Western literate adult American, this keyboard is built on there. Okay. It's built into our body. We have a physical map of that in our brain tissue. That makes that very fast and fluent for us because anywhere I go and I see this keyboard, I don't even have to think about it. I know how I input text there. I don't have to think of where I am in the system or how I do it. I just go, it's kind of transparent. That's what we get to build for our users with LAMP and Unity, is we get to, they get to build mo a motor plan map of how this works. Once you learn how to say a word, you know how to say a word. So you, we get to build patterns in here like action man or herb the verb here. Whenever he ends a spelling of two or three buttons, you get a verb. Notice, by the way, um, I can turn text off on this one. You can't do this in word power, by the way. I mostly turn text off just to really highlight that this, even LAMP, which always has the text at the top, especially on the app, um, even LAMP is built this way. It just is, with all that text on there, we, we, we kind of often don't think so. But anytime I end a spelling like with Action Man, I get a verb that's related to the button or buttons that I hit before it. Bed Action Man is sleep mom and loves her baby. Uh, I read the book, I play with the dice, but I work with the hammer and so on and give you a hands-on training on this. Uh, but if I end a spelling with this blue button over here, apple blue spells hungry. And the picture there doesn't help in this case. It should be a paintbrush like these other two. And often I do actually change that for this one. But uh, drink blue is the bed blue is tired. So this is the adjective pattern. So herb the verb, that's kind of verb and noun. And blue though is adjective or describing word. And so the whole system is built around patterns like this that we get to teach our users even before they really have the language comprehension of that. Because they're motor plans, we get to teach the language kind of through the motor plan which is actually how a lot of us learn language, like the vast majority. So that's what LAMP, the LAMP approach, and I've been doing bad terminology, LAMP Words for Life is actually the name of the vocabulary that you can get on Accents and on the iPad app. Uh, LAMP itself, when you hear that, that really just means the theoretical approach. But we make a mess of that. I make a mess of that by using those interchangeably. So LAMP is the theor theoretical approach that you can go and take LAMP workshops on. Uh, LAMP Words for Life is available both on those Accent devices and on the app, whereas Unity is only available on the Accent devices. Uh, and Unity, Jason, yeah, there's our turn, timer. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the recording off here really yep. quick. Thanks everyone. Um, we'll reach out for more information on all those. We, you do have a lot of these trainings on your website. And of course we want to email you, Yeah. Um, but also um, you'll be back in the spring. So yes, if you want to talk spring. more about this. And maybe you, you guys will all tell that. me what I'm going to talk about. Exactly. All right. We all right. are going to stop that recording.